Hey, do you love the Songs or Spells podcast presented by me, Carolyn King, hearing all about how musicians use magic in their lives? And do you want to level up your life using the easy spiritual tips discussed with our amazing guests like Aurora, Idols and OG Sex Pistol Glenn Matlock? Well, now is the time. Over on our Patreon community, we have weekly recorded lessons on everything from law of attraction, manifesting, affirmations. So think of me as your personal guide for your spiritual glow up. So what are you waiting for? As Billie Eilish, Bruno Mars, even Ariana Grande know, yep, they practice this. A weekly bit of witchery does not take long. Once you join the Patreon, you have full access to the entire back catalogue of exclusive weekly Patreon episodes and a weekly Group Connect call where we will share tips on how to apply this in our everyday lives. So come join us. You can access the Patreon community via the link in the show notes or on our Instagram bio at Songs or Spells Podcast or on our TikTok bio at Songs or Spells. I can't wait to meet you. Hey witches, and what a guest I have this week. The one and only Diana Yukawa. Now, the half English, half Japanese violinist was born in Tokyo and has performed at some of the world's greatest venues, such as the Royal Albert Hall and a sold out Hollywood Bowl. She has collaborated with Craig Armstrong, Jeff Beck, Nitin Sony. Ghost Harmonic, as well as some of the world's greatest orchestras, including the Royal Philharmonic, English Chamber and the BBC Concert Orchestra. She really shows us that the violin is a diverse instrument which can captivate anyone with her powerful performances and her connection to nature. So let's meet Diana. Hello everyone, I'm Diana Yukawa. I live in the Cotswolds in England and I am a violinist and a composer. Thank you so much for that. So the theme of the podcast then is the idea of a song as holding an intention and how it can sometimes be a spell in the world or in the universe. So are you spiritual in any way? Yes, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm a very spiritual person. It's something that's always, I've always resonated with in my life. And I'm, yeah, so I'd say that I am a spiritual person. <laughs> I think it's something that's always been around me. So even as a, a young child, I was surrounded by things that were spiritual. I had a lot of exposure to those things. So it always felt very natural and I felt very at home with it. And I think also since moving actually from London to the Cotswolds, there's a lot of that kind of movement here. People are very in touch with their spirituality and there's lots of different ways of expressing that and exploring it. So I think it's something, and also I think being a musical, it kind of lends itself to being someone who is a spiritual person. So I think it's just always been around really. That's fantastic. So it sounds like you're quite connected to nature. That, that was one of the biggest reasons why we wanted to move out of London. It was very much so that we could be more in tune with the world around us and our surroundings and being more connected to, you know, where we're living. And yeah. I love being in a city and I love city life, but it's not as possible to really ground yourself where you're at. It's not so possible to even eat like locally grown food or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It was, it was a real hunger for wanting to be a little bit more connected to mother nature. And mm -hmm. it was amazing when, once we moved here, you know, you just notice things so differently and you get, I remember the first year of experiencing all of this seasons we would get so excited when oh well, you know there's a new leaf sprouting on the tree or there's a new bud and it was just really beautiful to enjoy and find beauty in those really simple things. I love that so much so it sounds like you were really craving that because I spend a lot of time in London as well and it's very easy to get sucked into the at race of life there as much as it's a beautiful wonderful city it's non-stop right yeah, absolutely. And, you know, having said that, I do really miss it. And we come back to London quite regularly. So I can have that fix of the hustle yeah. and the bustle and, and the wonderful energy that it provides. But then when I come home, it's just like this huge exhalation. 
and mm-hmm. a spiritual exhalation when you can just say oh you know I'm home and there's mm-hmm. the space and there's the air and there's the trees and the hills that surround me and it's just it's so nice to be able to to call that home. That's so funny because I did live in London for a while and then I moved back to Scotland and I was living in the countryside I guess and then lockdown happened yeah and sometimes I wonder what would it have been like to have lockdown in London my lockdown was yeah. was kind of beautiful because I was surrounded by nature and the pressure was off and like you said I was eating local food I was really had time for myself so has it been the same yeah. for you in terms of the pandemic Yeah, I mean, I think very much like your experience, I found it, um, you know, out of a really difficult and unprecedented situation, there was actually a lot of beauty and positivity to be found in my personal experience Mm -hmm. of, of lockdown. And, you know, I'm so grateful that I was here when it was all happening because I am my my eldest daughter was two at the time and I just had another baby so she was only a couple of months old and I look back and I think oh my goodness you know had we been more restricted being in a city environment I think that would have been very tough I think I would have really struggled and I think being here you know the thing that kind of got me through and really fed all of us was that we could just go back to the basics and we could feel like we weren't being locked down because we still had so much space around us so it was really we were we were really very much in our own like little family bubble and you know in a way I look back and think oh there's some really nice memories from it actually (laughs) we acknowledge that it was a pandemic but personally and it's about going into your own resources and I think it honestly I think it taught a lot of people how to do that and that's so important yeah for individuals especially if you are spiritual yeah I also think even if you're not a particularly spiritual person I think what's needed globally as a kind of global movement I think the lockdown activated that because even for people who don't you know on a day-to-day basis think about things and or connect with things in a spiritual way it kind of forced you to because I think everyone was really looking inwards and thinking what what is life about you know what's really important what do I want and what makes me happy and you know how can how can we all come together in humanity when we weren't allowed to see each other so I think that you know even for the people who aren't particularly spiritual it was an awakening time amazing no I totally agree and I'm so interested in your your musical journey and It seems like, so I know that you're very much classically trained and that you've worked extremely hard on your craft and that really shows in terms of your output. Did you always know that you wanted to do music? Yeah, I absolutely always knew. I had been playing the piano for about a year before I finally got a violin and I just, I can even now remember saying, I want to play a violin, I really want to learn, like just let me have a violin. And when I finally started learning, it was just, it was a real love affair with the instrument and I was completely Mm -hmm. besotted and infatuated. And I remember not long after, you know, I was, I was saying to my family, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. You know, when I'm older, I want to play on the stage. And so I think, you know, it was, I was really young to be thinking those kinds of things in that way because you know now I've got two daughters and one of them's almost five and you know if she turned around and said to me those things I'd be like oh you know I'd listen but I'd think okay do you you know how can you know this but yeah I think it was just it was written in the stars somehow for me and I I found it pretty early on. (laughs) That's fantastic so did you then go on to train at conservatoire? or a school like that when I was when I first started I was just learning with the the local teachers who lived in the area and as I got a little bit older I think some of the one of the teachers was saying to my mum you know I think it might be good if if you maybe get her a more serious professor because she's showing that she's you know really interested and she's doing quite well with it so from then on, I think I was about eight years or seven or eight. I remember going to like a big violin teacher and she had 
students at the Royal College of Music and I was just like wow you know this is really amazing but gradually and then I went to music school for a while as well but then everything kind of changed when I was 14 because that's when I got my debut recording contract so I was at a very young age and it was a real do I carry on doing all of the academic side of it as well or do I just go with what's you know what's being presented to me and it, it was just no question I was like well this is my dream come true and life is too short who knows what will happen and so I just went for it <laughs> I love it I love that courage and that risk taking I think that's incredible we need more of that <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you I don't know well yeah sometimes it's courageous sometimes it can be you know a little bit irresponsible perhaps but no I you know I'm a firm believer that life is very short and we need to live in the moment and in the present and we just have to to go for it and if something makes you happy and it feels good then you should you should go for it (laughs) absolutely trust the process you've worked with some incredible people as well who span a lot of different genres which is so cool can you tell us more about that yeah I I'm so grateful that I've had such a variety of experiences and interactions with different people and I think when I came out of the classical world. That was something that I was really passionate about. I really wanted to, you know, not just for myself, but for other people, I wanted to show that the violin could be so many different things and we don't have to label it. It doesn't have to be put into a box or into a category. So it was a really valuable experience to work with. I've done stuff with Nitin Sawney and then I I made the Ghost Harmonic collaboration which was really cool, something really really different and it's been such a wonderful and rich experience to to have all of that influence around me. Yeah so if I had to ask your favourite collaboration what would it be? I think oh that's really hard. I think The one that I'm really, one that I still feel really excited about because I feel like there's a lot of life left and we've still got plans to grow on the collaboration is probably Ghost Harmonic. Your album that's coming out very soon, I believe it's the end of this month, is that right? Yes, it's the end of the month. It's called Spirals. It's just this beautiful circular It's like you're in nature and it's almost like something you've created in nature. Was that your intention? Yeah, it's really funny because I remember there was a lot of talk from everyone like you've got to name the album, you've got to get everything finalised and we've got these dates and everyone's like, no, you've got to, you've got to do it. And I'm always like, yeah, 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 no, don't worry, it will come. And then I, I always, as we were saying before, I always trust the process and I don't feel stressed out about deadlines because I just know when it comes to me, it, just, it comes and it flows and it all feels right. And I just, yeah, I completely remember the moment when spirals came to mind because I feel like the journey that I've been on, which is represented in this album, it's been, it has been a spiral. And I think spirals are very, they're very spiritual. And I think that it's, you know, kind of how life works with these different cycles of life. And because I was pregnant and becoming a mother, you know, those were all very significant things that were going on in my mind and thinking about my ancestors and where I came from and all that kind of thing. So I remember spirals came to mind and I had a really clear vision of lying somewhere. I didn't really care where it was, but it was being in a spiral and kind of being held and supported by by the spiral. So it just, it all came really quickly and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I think the imagery is really great. It's It's exactly what I had imagined. So it's really lovely that it's all finally come to life (laughs) that's incredible I absolutely love the cover art it's gorgeous (laughs) well it's actually it's been a long journey this album it really started when I was pregnant with my first daughter and it's all stuff I wrote when I was pregnant with her but also after she was born and then when I was pregnant with my second daughter so it's been a real documentation of this huge transitional time 
in my life and I'm really yeah I'm really happy that it's recorded you know it's there it spirals that's the real representation of my life before and after. <laughs> Do you feel that you've you've changed or evolved since the start of that process? Yeah I think so I, I think it's it's funny now because you know I'm I was always really nervous about how stepping back into music would be after having children because I never really stopped I just went a bit quieter and you know every, the pace was a lot slower and I wanted to be fully present for my babies and you know enjoy that really magical time so finding that balance you know and I think that's the just the age-old story for all of the mothers and and fathers out there but it was always a really kind of nerve-wracking thought you know how can I how can I do this because I love all of these things like the violin was my my first baby and how can I honor that in the same way as before or commit myself in the same way and commit myself to my children and to my family so that's you know, that's still an ongoing thing. But I think the thing that I have been really surprised by is how I, I actually feel so much more confident and grounded um, in my music than I, I think I've ever done before. And, you know, that's also not just with the writing, but I, I really feel that in my performance. So when I'm on stage and I'm playing, I just, I feel like I've kind of gone deeper and I know who I, who I am way more than I did before and I have motherhood to to thank for that <laughs> that's amazing it sounds like knowing this that anyone who produces life like you are completely the divine feminine you are bringing life to the world you're a creator it's it's so underrated I think as well in terms of its significance so do you feel yeah. that you've yeah Definitely. you've you've embodied the respect that being a mother should have I'd like to think so. I can definitely see how being a mother is, well, how I think about it, is one of the most significant jobs or roles that you can have and how it does go completely underrated or unrecognised or just unacknowledged. I've really felt that. And also we've done things very much on our own. We haven't had any help, Mm. like no babysitters or or anything I don't think I haven't even spent a night away from my girls ever that's another thing like that will obviously come someday but we've really just thrown ourselves completely into it and everyone has their own way of doing it but uh, yeah it's really um sometimes you just want someone to kind of pat you on the back and say you're doing a really good job (laughs) sometimes you know that's that's what you you need to hear but also yeah I do find that going through that and having lived this stage of motherhood I I kind of feel so empowered and I I feel like I've been reborn because I can give myself that kind of respect and love and recognition and nurture you know I kind I can get it from myself now I don't need to look for it from somebody else or look for any validation because my whole world has opened up to a different realm I do remember when I gave birth to my first daughter I said to my husband I am a woman you know this is what it feels like this to be a woman and I I brought life into the world and I literally felt like a goddess I just felt like divine woman and it was amazing because I don't think I'd ever had that kind of self-belief or love before and suddenly I was just like wow you know I'm I'm doing this and I've done this and I I thought I was amazing and I was just like oh, on cloud nine so yeah I've um, definitely learned to love myself in a new way. Wow oh, I'm totally blown away by that that is so amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I think especially in the creative industries it's ignored a lot of the time and it's almost disencouraged I think for, especially for women in music yeah. it's like oh don't go off and have kids yeah. you know oh, yeah you're gonna ruin your career yeah has anyone ever said that to you or kind of have you, have you felt that no no one said it to me directly there's definitely been feelings of you know how how can it carry on or how can you devote yourself to your career if you have children but 
the way I see it is now that I have a family and I'm a mother, it's totally enriched my life. And as an artist, you know, I feel like it's just changed, changed my game. Like it's just, it's, it's gone to a different level and I'm just, I'm just so happy and I'm so proud and I wouldn't change anything. Like if anything, having children is just going to make it all better. <laughs> That's so fantastic. And no one's critique Mick Jagger when he has kids or when um, Iggy Pop or whoever, you know, starts having kids. No one says that to men in the industry, right? No, and it doesn't matter how old they are. Or well, then, you, you know, you get the other side of it of, you know, well, how old are you? Or are you going to have children? Or, you know, yeah. is that on the cards? And yeah, I just, it's, yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, let's just keep pioneering for these things to change. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And do they love music as well, your daughters? Yes, they really do. My eldest is crazy into ballet and she's really good at it. And she she just loves all kind of dance in general. And they're both so sweet. When, when they see me playing or if I'm practicing in the house, they go and run and get their ukuleles and they try and play with me. And then they like, they want little violins. They're asking me to have small violins and everything. So it's really, really sweet. And it's so touching because every time they hear a violin on the radio, they say, is that you, mama? Is that your violin music? So yeah, it's really sweet. <laughs> That's so great. So so my, my best friend, Angelie, her six-year-old daughter, soon to be seven, is just starting to learn the violin. So she's got a place oh, wow. at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland for absolute beginner violinists. So have you got any advice for her? <laughs> oh, I think... It's so learning the violin is probably one of the most frustrating instruments because it takes a while before you can feel any reward from the sound that you are trying to create or that you're creating. So I think my biggest piece of advice is to relax. It's to try and let, you know, your body really, yeah, just relax because it's one of those instruments where you, you tense everything up. All your muscles get really tense and you're just so desperate to try and get something out that that's going to really work against you. So it's just give it time and, you know, have, have patience, which is really hard. I'm not a patient person at all, but it, yeah, it will come. So just, just enjoy it. <laughs> we interrupt this broadcast for Spellcast, your weekly horoscope. So, after the full moon, sparks might fly in your relationships and these sparks could start a forest fire if you're not careful. Venus is squaring off with primal Mars which will rev up the heat but could also increase the level of conflict and anger. The Sun in Virgo will also form an opposition with dreamy and disorientating Neptune in Pisces which could cause you to romanticise something and feel like you're falling for the idea rather than the actual reality. So rethink your expectations or your understanding of how a certain relationship might work, especially if the dynamic is triggering you more than it's inspiring or comforting you. Remember, love should feel good. Now back to my conversation with Diana. So I'd love to know who influences you musically. I have so many different musical influences. When I was growing up and I was really in the thick of classical training, my favorite music to listen to was R&B music. That's what I actually wanted to be outside of a violinist. And then when I was trying to come out of that and find my feet with who am I, what do I want to do, and how can I come out of the, the whole classical world, I was very heavily influenced by a Japanese artist called Yuichi Sakamoto and then Craig Armstrong from Scotland. They were real, they were real inspirations for me because they, they do things across the board. They do all sorts of types of music and everything they do is really well respected and they didn't need to be pigeonholed as something. And that was something I felt so strongly about because I was always, you know, I was always really kind of bitter about people saying, you know, well, what are you? Are you classical? Are you contemporary? Are you crossover? And I, I always just say, you know, if it's good music, it's good music. It doesn't matter what you label it as and I think music is it either speaks to you or it doesn't and that's a very personal thing but I I hate being 
pigeonholed and categorized. I just find it really, I find that really hard. <laughs> so I was previously signed to BMG and Sony, but when I, I can't even remember how many years ago it was, when, when I was still in London and I started releasing things on my own, I, yeah, I wanted to do things completely independently. So the label is, it's, it's mine. It's, you know, I have a hundred percent say and control over everything. So yeah, I was like, oh, okay, I can do this on my own. <laughs> I called it long body music, which was inspired by my dachshund, my crazy dog. Honestly, my dog is a total nut job, but yeah, he will forever live on in, with lo- through long body music. <laughs> I have got something quite exciting with a new with a label planned for the future so there will be life outside of long body music but but yes it is really wonderful to to know that that's completely mine as well (laughs) you trusted the process again (laughs) yes definitely (laughs) honestly that's something that I've only really got to grips with recently is trust in the process and it's such an important part of like the law of attraction and manifesting. It's the final step. It's just trusting the process and then ye shall receive whatever you're supposed to. Yeah. Because it's always this or something better because I think in the past I've been quite uh, maybe a controlling manifester. I've been like, okay, it has to be this. It has to be this. It has to be this way. But actually what is for you doesn't go by you. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm a bit of a control freak, actually, by nature. I'm a Virgo, so I like things to be a certain way. My daughter is also a Virgo. She was born the day before me, and she's so we're so similar. And it's it was it's a journey. I I mean, it's an ongoing journey. It's forever going to be, you know, a learning process. But it was something that really I think I started maybe nine years ago when we were in London, which was learning. It was actually learning to say no and learning to have a boundary and not being afraid of that. And then becoming a mother just kind of, you know, made it happen even more, helped me speed along that journey because suddenly you're responsible for another human being and you have to be that person's voice. And that's been a huge learning experience for me. So I'm so grateful to my children. You know, they're like my really wise teachers because (laughs) I'm learning so much through them. (laughs) I love that. The idea that, yeah, that people, adults or children or even pets (laughs) can be like mirrors reflecting something back to us. I really believe that and are great. Yeah, that's really big. I mean, the, the way that, you're just suddenly seeing yourself and like all ugly parts of yourself as well and things that you need to work on and it's it's very confronting but it's amazing because that's where growth can happen you know that's when you can start evolving yeah I think that's so vital because a lot of people who are a bit new to spirituality and things like that think that it's a click your fingers and something magic appears. (laughs) But shadow work or the going into the limiting beliefs or processing things that we need to, to, in order to move forward is such a vital part of it. And I guess it's part of the asking part, the initial part. Yeah, you can't really ask the universe for something if you're not, you know, believing in it or ready for it. And that takes work behind the scenes. Yeah, it takes a lot of work and it's also, um, there's so much courage and bravery needed because it's really hard to to face those really dark things or things we've shut away or, you know, there's just, there's a lot. We've all got stories, we've all got baggage and, you know, it's it's been a big, big journey. And for, for me, ha- I mean, this is getting really personal now, but, you know, having my children was such a huge thing because I'm estranged from my mum and I have been for quite a few years. So it was, that's another reason why Spirals is called Spirals because it was so much about um, letting go of 
of that past and learning to kind of mother myself like we were saying earlier about loving yourself and respecting yourself and and giving yourself that nurture that's been a huge part of my personal journey and especially having children it really magnified that and what the way I want my daughters to see themselves and the way I want them to love themselves it's it's yeah it's been a huge journey but I feel so grateful because where I am now is in such a a happy wonderful and blessed place has it been quite a difficult journey then with with that the hardest thing to start with was that feeling of shame when you tell people or you tell your friends well actually I don't speak to my mom anymore Mm -hmm. and the general reaction you get is how how can you not talk to your mom you know that's your mother she gave birth to you she gave you life and it doesn't matter you know it's your mom so I think in the beginning that was something I had to really overcome because I was a bit embarrassed I was a bit ashamed and then once that kind of dissolved um you know I was I became very strong with my response or very grounded and I would just say you know I have to do what's right for me and if there's toxicity in my life then I need to move on from it and it's it's really hard for some people to understand, but then sometimes you'll meet someone and they just completely resonate and they've had a similar experience or something. And something I've really felt over the past, I'd say eight years, is I'm learning what family really means. And for me, family is about the people who choose to be in your life. It's about the people who, who love you, unconditionally and it you know families can look different nowadays it's not necessarily the conventional way that we we see things of course that's wonderful and if it works and if it's if it's nourishing then that's really beautiful but um there are different yeah there are different visions that makes a lot of sense to me because I remember I had an ex who used to say but you can't, you can't cut family out. You can't disagree with family and things like that because they're family. And I was like, no, if someone's a dick, they're a dick. (laughs) I know there's this whole kind of, there's this whole culture of, oh, but it's your family. So they're allowed to treat you like shit. And that's okay. You just take it because it's your family. But it definitely comes to a point where, you know, I feel whether it's family or not, if somebody, if it's not, if it's not healthy, it's, it's not healthy. And if yeah. you can't find a way to heal it on both sides or whoever, whatever the, the setup is, if you can't all come to a healing place, then maybe it's, it's not for now. Maybe it's, maybe it's for another time. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree. I've had to do a lot of forgiveness work. And I find that quite powerful because I I remember hearing about just people who've been through really horrendous things and they've been able to forgive like a perpetrator or something like that. And they've said that it gave them a level of freedom that maybe if they were holding on to resentment and anger that they wouldn't have necessarily. So I do try to practice that, but also with very healthy boundaries. Like at the same time, I forgive you, but I'm not going to let this into my space because it's like you say, it's not healthy and it's toxic. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and that is such a huge and hard thing to do is, you know, to, to forgive those things or, you know, forgive things that have really really hurt you but there is there is such a freedom in that and as you say you can do that but you can still have your boundaries so you can Mm -hmm. still you know do what is right for you but it's definitely you know I don't want to be the kind of person who lives with resentment or regret or or you know any of these things it's just life is life is totally too short for that and it's you know it's not also the way I want to model things for my children you know having yeah. children has really made me think even you know more deeply about just the way I live my life and the choices that I make and you know that I'm what I'm modeling for my children so it's 
yeah it's such a huge thing and it's also ongoing like you know of course you can forgive but it doesn't mean some days don't still feel hard or yeah. you can still feel upset you know and I think it's just really acknowledging all of those feelings and allowing yourself to hold space for it and mm -hmm. and just really feel feel all of it validating your feelings because I, I think we're definitely in a society where we're sometimes encouraged to push them down but it doesn't really help anyone does it no it's not helpful and it's not it's not healthy and mm -hmm. I think for for we have a lot of generational work to do and and we will for for still yeah. you know for many generations but if we can make those small steps then you know that's actually huge work that's real shifting that's that's movement yeah yeah I kind of see it as well as as breaking the cycle you can sort of break the cycle oh, yeah yeah the mistakes that potentially parents made as well if we can break that cycle then that's massive because otherwise it'll just continue <laughs> yeah that's that I mean that's the hugest thing if you can if you can well firstly it's it, it's being aware of it it's seeing mm. what what that cycle is and and just having awareness I think is such a huge and powerful and healing thing to have mm. and it's yeah I mean looking back at my whole experience it's just every, every year it's really shifted and it's grown and it you know it has good times and and bad times but I can see how actually I'm trying I am trying to break things and I don't know if I've necessarily been successful but I think the the good part is that I'm willing and I'm trying and it's something I talk about and also with my children you know just on a very basic level I want to show them that I'm I'm a human being and sometimes I'm going to make mistakes and you know sometimes I might you know slightly lose my temper or or react in a way that I don't want to react so whenever those kinds of things happen I always just go to them and I say look I'm really really sorry you know mama shouldn't have said that or that's not the way I want to be and I'm really sorry so I think there's just um a huge thing that I'm noticing with my children about acknowledging all those feelings and and talking about it because even my youngest one who's only two she'll she'll turn around and say to me mama you or or Elsie or, who, or whoever it was or whatever it was she'll say you make me feel sad you know she talks about her feelings and and we acknowledge it and and if they're upset as well it's like trying to not not try and just make it better and say, oh, don't cry or don't cry or don't be silly, don't worry. It's always holding space for those feelings because knowing myself, I'm, I've always been a real people pleaser. And if things are uncomfortable for people, I try and make it better. Or I'm always, you know, I'm always trying to make everything okay for other people or, or help them or do the right thing, which when it, at a time when it's not always good for me to do or you know any uncomfortable feelings you kind of you shun them away and because I know that my my eldest daughter is very similar to me I'm trying my best to 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 show her that it's okay if she's angry like that's okay you can be angry and you can show those feelings and show those emotions and you know it's all part of being alive isn't it it can't always be good 100% of the time wow. it sounds like you're doing a tremendous job <laughs> <laughs> and I think when you when you show those vulnerabilities to people or your real experience that's you know that's a gift because when you that's how you can connect with people and I think that's why music is really it's my life and it's my savior it's my therapy it's everything because music can it has no boundaries and it has no you know language boundaries it can connect with anyone anywhere and that's you know that's the most beautiful thing when we go we're even going back to talking about lockdown and what was important it's connecting with other people and when we weren't physically allowed to do that that was a really difficult challenging time because it was well of course we want to look after each other and protect each other but what does it mean if we can't have the human connection so yeah music is is very powerful in that way so I feel really blessed that I can call myself a violinist. <laughs>
Incredible. It seems like it's completely your divine purpose and you're just living it out in such a beautiful yes. way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel I feel so happy and I feel anyone out there listens to my music. If it's just one person, I always say if it's one person who listens and can feel moved or or something, then I feel like my job is done. So what is next from you then? So the album is due out in three weeks time. I'm not really sure how much I can say, but I'm I'm excited for some plans we've got coming for the end of the year. And it still involves spirals, but it will also take on a new lease of life. And I'm looking forward to some really exciting collaborations. I'm so excited about this album and I'm so excited to finally share something that is really meaningful to me because it represents such a special time in my life. So I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled that that's finally come together. But I'm also really, you know, so excited and hungry for what's coming next and, and getting back into the studio and writing more and and just keeping that momentum going. So yeah, ho- I, there won't be such a long break now in between, in, in between releases. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for, for just being so candid. And I, I really feel like people are gonna connect. And like we said earlier, the right people will really connect with this, the people who need to hear it. and and feels like seen and acknowledged by a similar experience. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really hope so. And yeah, it's been so lovely to to chat with you. Thank you. It's been really meaningful. Diana is really a spiritual inspiration from everything that she's gone through, through losing her father in an air disaster, to being estranged from her mother, to signing her first deal with BMG at 14. She really represents a self-awareness and the ability to go inward that I really, really admire because we are really the source of our own power. I thought it was absolutely beautiful the way that she has broken the cycle with her own children and she continues to be an incredible role model for them. It was truly, truly heartwarming. I don't think we've seen peak Diana yet musically and I'm super excited for the secret project that she mentioned. So make sure you follow her Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more updates. This podcast has been hosted and produced by me, Carolyn King, with music from the Caledonias. Remember, you can join our Patreon community for weekly witchy lessons. And follow our Instagram at Songs or Spells Podcast and our TikTok at Songs or Spells for Tarot Friday every Friday. See you next week. <laughs>